welcome back friends so today I am working on my Edward zero in 148 scale paint of choice that I'm using for the aft section of the cockpit or fuselage is mr. color 57 metallic blue green one product that I've really grown fond of recently is my razor glass vial once you snip off the pieces off of the sprue, you can just use the glass file to knock off all the nubs and it makes it ridiculously polished smooth and ready to work with. Attaching all the different bits to the cockpit walls was pretty straightforward. Edouard instructions include a picture that gives you reference on where their placement should be. I lock them in place with uh, just some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and they're good to go. Make sure you don't do what I did with these rudder pedals. What I did is I chopped off the entire right and left side of the rudder pedals. What you should do is leave the posts there and then have just the actual rudder paddle plates, I guess, replaced by the, the uh, photo edge. Works much better. As always, follow the instructions. For removing the parts off of the sprue tree, what I've been using is the God Hand Nippers, and they are fantastic. Very expensive, but man, do they do a great job on those. Attaching the seat and the struts can be a little bit tricky. And so what I recommend doing is just glue it in place with extra thin cement. And so it's where it isn't completely cured and you can have it moving around a little bit. Then you can check the reference in the, ins in the instructions to make sure that it's actually placed at the right angle. For Edward, there's two different color callouts for the cockpit and it kind of depends on which scheme you're gonna do, what factor it came from, and either one of them can be a little bit challenging to make sure that the color is spot on and perfect matching all the photo etch sheets. And so I decided to just mix my own based off of XF5071 from Tamiya and kind of mixing in some darker greens till it gets close enough for satisfaction. I'd be curious to do this project again and use all the decals that are supplied rather than using the photo etch that's pre-colored and that way you can ensure that you have a good match. For gluing all the copious amounts of little bits that go onto the sides of the cockpit walls I used extra thin CA glue, dipped it into that and then just put it in place.
So as you can see, this is a bit of one of those learn from my mistake. You can see how putting on the rudder pedals is a lot more challenging without having those posts. And so I have kind of a third hand tool to kind of lock it in place and I glue it into place and, and it works out, but it added a lot more frustration than what really needed to be there. At the bottom of the cockpit, there's a little bit of a window. I'm not sure if it's used for bombing or if it's used for some other indicator for landing gear or whatever. To protect that, I just have some liquid masking fluid to protect that in place that I'll later remove. Now I just remove some of the details off the sides of the cockpit so I can put on photo wet sheets that will be a replacement. One of my secrets that I use for the instrument panel and anything that has a two-part photo etch with dials is I attach it with Gorilla Glue Clear. And what this does is it'll attach them and bond it really, really well, but anywhere there is, there's a hole for the instrument panel dials, it'll kind of ooze up a little bit and it'll look just like glass. Now for some paint chipping. There's a couple of ways to accomplish this, and this is probably not the best way, but it is certainly the easiest way to want to replicate it with this. What I have is just uh, Vallejo aluminum, and I have it dabbed into with a, a sponge, and I'm removing as much of the material that I can, and then I can go to the different parts on where there's a raised area, and just a little bit of a dab gives you random chips in different places, especially to expose raised areas. And it fits the belt pretty well.
We want to then give a lot of attention to the seats because it's going to be one of the things when you look into the cockpit that it just stands out. So we want to make sure all the chips look good and realistic to where you would expect chips to happen as the pilot's getting in and out of the seats. And so even into the bucket, because sometimes they're going to put their feet there as they're climbing in and out. So just kind of figure out what different places are going to have that abrasion as it gets used. For the bottom of the cockpit, there's going to be all sorts of attention that needs. Give it plenty of loving because we've got to remember that the feet are going to be moving around. There's going to be dirt in there that kind of scrapes stuff. So they tend to get pretty abused. Now for the photo etch seat belts. This is an area that can make or break your cockpit. Since we're trying to use metal to replicate fabric, there can be some effects that just go completely wrong. What shouldn't happen with these seat belts is that it looks like it's getting abducted or defying gravity. So what we wanna do is make sure that there's the proper sag in some areas and there's tension where there should be. So what I do is I just glue the buckles in place, make sure they cure, and then I'm gonna come back to it. Now I can come back to it and kind of give it twists and, and tension where needed. The top strap is going to be affected by gravity and so it should be very much clung to the back of the seat. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue behind it and then just put pressure so it's firm against the back of the seat. For the side straps, they're gonna have all sorts of little twists and kinks and all sorts of folds to it. And so you can get pretty creative with it. 
And then what I recommend doing is putting some glue below the buckle. Since the buckle is metallic and it's the heaviest part of all of it, it should be you know, held by gravity in place, not floating. Um, unless you're using some really stiff fabric, which never happens in seat belts. One of the effects that I like to do for anything that's gun barrel or certain metallic items is I'm going to take a pencil and just kind of sand off all of the graphite that's in there. This pencil I picked up from a certain Swedish furniture maker, let's say. Then I can use a makeup applicator or other sponge or some other different things like a brush and then just rub it all over the exposed areas off of the gun and that gives you a really good gunmetal effect instead of some of like the silver dry brushing that kind of gives it too much of a silver metal kind of thing and not what an actual gun would look like. One of my favorite products that I've gotten into recently is the Citadel Shade Washes. So there, it's an acrylic product, but it's very different from the Vallejos. It's very much like a magic wash that you might formulate on your own, but it's already has all the guesswork done by Citadel. To apply it, very straightforward. Make sure that you have good coverage, not super gloppy, but it needs to be on everything. That way you don't have a tide mark and it goes best over gloss, but matte can work. And it then just flows into the different recesses, gives you a good shading look, gives you kind of good depth to it. And it's pretty magical product. So I apply that same wash to the sides. I don't want it to be too thick, but also want to make sure that everything gets covered all in the nooks and crannies. And it does a good job of also blending in the instrument panel portions or the different photo etch panel portions to the painted portions and kind of brings them together and blends it. Works out really well. After you do paint it, it does work with gravity. So you kind of want to make sure that the plane is in a position, a fuselage is in a position where it naturally would be in real life and let that gravity work for you. If you have too much, if you get into it within a certain amount of time, you can clean it up with Windex or just kind of blend it in with Windex. So very forgiving in that respect.
For the cockpit floor, I'm gonna be a little more liberal with the product and put a quite a bit more on there. We're gonna have other washes that are gonna kind of tone that down. It's gonna be further away from the eye in the cockpit in there and oftentimes when you're doing stuff in the cockpit, you kind of want it to be overdone because by the time you close everything up, it's going to obscure and change lighting to where it's not overdone anymore. Now to add some Earth Effects Dust. So this product is enamel based, works really well for this purpose. Start out as just a wash and then we'll come back and do some blending. But if you look at real cockpits, you know, they didn't exactly go in after every flight and clean them up and they've got like a maid that it goes in and makes sure that there's no dust, especially in your places like Tunisia there's gonna be all sorts of dust that gets into there. And this adds a lot of depth, a lot of real realism. Now, when we just put it in as a regular wash, it's a little bit too stark. So what we wanna do is put in some mineral spirits, some thinner, and then just work on blending it in. And when you just kind of dab it like that, it tends to just flow all into the, the corners like it should in real life and it adds a big effect. So we'll do some of that to the sidewalls but since it's kind of on the side, we're gonna work a little bit differently with gravity and be a little bit more of towards the bottom and add some kind of just stippling to some different chunks that are going on to the sides of the, of the cockpit walls.
don't forget the seat this place gets just as much dust granted some of it is going to get wiped away as the pilot kind of gets in and out but like i said there is going to be a little bit of gunk that's in there purely from pilot putting their feet there if as they're kind of climbing in and out so i add that to there also same thing that i did on the cockpit sidewalls i'm going to do to the back of it and just make sure that wherever there's different dust that's sticking sticks Thanks for watching. See you on the next episode. Make sure you subscribe.